greetings to you from Chile, Manitoba, from Treaty One, Heart of the Métis Nation. And uh, very, very happy to be with you today. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for the invitation and colleagues um, and supporters across the country. What a great way to gather during this time. Uh, before I do a bit of reflection, I was asked to say just a few words about who we are as an organization, which I'll do very quickly. I think a lot of you probably know, but for those of you who don't, Canadian Food Grains Bank is a Christian response to hunger. So what that means is that we are an association of 15 different member churches and church-based agencies, including, of course, the Anglican Church of Canada through PWRDF. Uh, we are focused on a mission that is to end global hunger, and our vision is a world without hunger. Our issue is that one in nine people are still hungry today around the world. So we do provide emergency food in times of crisis, which is particularly important right now. Uh, we do 60% um, of our work is through emergency food, about 35% of it is through agriculture and livelihoods work. And we also have uh, nutrition programs that make up a smaller but important part of our work as well. So we are oriented toward this idea also um, when we talk about ending hunger, more specifically, we're oriented toward food security, which is when all people have regular access to enough nutritious food to lead healthy and active lives. Uh, um, other parts of our work do include advocating for changes in public policy and better access to food, as well as um, doing engagement of the public, which Suzanne already mentioned. Um, I wanted to say just a couple of words about our, um, our work in times of COVID. Um, first of all, we're all in this together. Uh, the whole world is affected by COVID. We want to assure Canadians that we are continuing to provide um, our, what we call our essential services to vulnerable populations, which is continuing our food programs around the world. Um, we are dealing with disruptions. We are dealing with, um, you know, looking at ways to expand the programs that include uh, addressing the COVID realities um, around the world. Uh, it's, it's a difficult time for, for, for people everywhere. And of course, uh, one of the most important things we're doing in terms of engaging Canadians is raising awareness about the emerging food crisis. Um, that is a reality that we're gearing up for. As you know, we're a bank and how that works is um, we have the ability and the mandate to gather resources so that they can be used in times of crisis. So uh, we sum up the ways that Canadians can get involved in four straightforward ways. One is to give, uh, inviting Canadians who are able to do so to donate, and then also to pray, which is what we're doing today, which is awesome. And to learn more about the issue, to get involved, and of course, to advocate. So we have ways immediately for people to advocate. So we invite you to explore ways to do that by visiting us, contacting us. So in terms of the reflection, um, this is an important passage for anyone, any organization working for, uh, for ending hunger. Uh, and I sort of thought of this passage as, um, as organized miracles, I suppose, and, and organizations that work in miraculous ways. Organizations that balance temporal realities with eternal life or eternity style of living. Jesus lived a life of service to God, healing the sick and the oppressed. He was constantly dealing with temporal realities. People kept coming to him for those things, but pointing people always to eternal truths. People flocked to him, and that's what happens in this story of the feeding of the 5,000. It's one of the few stories that appears in all of the Gospels. And it's a great illustration of this. It starts off with a problem. So there was a great crowd. And obviously, um, long ways from making their food and whatnot. So they were hungry. A bit of a chaotic and problematic environment. Here's a boy with five small, small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. So here we have precious resources, 
but we're disorganized and it can't be done. <sighs> we see scarcity in the midst of chaos. Jesus then says, make the people sit down. I love this statement. It probably is the one that stands out for me the most. Basically, he says, get organized and be at peace. So bringing people to a place where they can think through the issue, think through the problem, but bringing a sense of deep peace about it. So Jesus goes about his work. He takes the low, the fish, he gives thanks. That's a really important piece as well. He got organized. He began with a prayer and gratitude for a world with enough for everyone if we share. Then he gave the bread to the disciples and disciples passed them out to the crowds. He organized, it's organized, and he took seriously the responsibility to distribute food to all who were hungry. Important phrase, they all had enough to eat. So he says, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So a few paragraphs beyond our reading, after finding some much needed time by himself, Jesus talks about the fact that people are flocking to him because they ate their fill. In other words, they were more concerned about how Jesus was fulfilling their temporal realities. As he often does, he starts teaching about eternal truths. I am the bread of life. So in our work, we have to remind ourselves not to resist, or sorry, not to give in to the temptation of pitting the temporal realities against eternal truth or eternal life or eternity thinking for that matter. Eternity thinking or eternal life, it's about a change in heart, in mindset, and a genuinely peaceful world where we don't just think of that next meal necessarily or other temporal preoccupation. We don't say that those are important. Jesus never says it was important. In fact, it's the opposite. He pays particular attention to people's illness, their hunger, their needs, temporal realities. But always you find him pointing to eternal life. And for all of these reasons, this is why we organize. We organize. PWRDF's motto it reflects what I would say that eternal life, eternity thinking, working toward a truly just, healthy, and peaceful world. It's an eternal thing. It's about whole hearts and minds. Now, ch check out the temporal realities. And I'm just going to read the Primates World Relief and Development Fund, is the Anglican Church of Canada's agency. For sustainable development and relief. With the support of Anglicans across Canada, PWDF, PWDF, PWRDF partners and with organizations working to increase healthy pregnancies and births, reduce gender inequality, relieve hunger, break the cycle of poverty in the world's most vulnerable communities. Against a backdrop of climate change, PWRDF strives to address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. There's temporal realities. Identifying them, understanding them, addressing them, responding to them, but really working toward a truly just, healthy and peaceful world. That is an organization about eternity thinking, about eternal life. I bless all of you in your work and offer you our prayers as we pray for members of churches, for partners around the world, um, that we continue to live a life of deep peace in a time of chaos. And uh, just want to bless everyone uh, who supports the, the Primates World Relief and Development Fund and the Food Grains Bank as we continue to work together.